from up here you can make out the outline of this big mound in my yard. This mound is a leach field for a septic tank. Each of the four corners of this mound has one of these sticking out of it, and it's a riser that's a plumbing access. This thing makes it possible to clean it out periodically, add treatment, and do some other routine maintenance. As you can imagine, because there are four of these, they've become somewhat of a nuisance to cut grass around. And so the purpose of this video is to see if I can't make them flush with the ground. We're going to turn this into this. Today's fun begins with a five quart stainless steel mixing bowl. She won't mind. It's about 10 inches wide, about five inches tall. The PVC pipe in the drain field is all inch and a half inside diameter. And so a coupler or a fitting that will fit onto the end of it will have approximately the same diameter as a two inch piece of PVC. That's what we're using here. Just in case you haven't figured it out yet, we are casting apart from concrete. And whenever you're doing that, it is not a good idea to encapsulate anything that's rigid inside of concrete. That is, unless you never want to get it back out. And here we have some plastic foam. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. This stuff's pretty easy to find. And we can make our pipe nice and soft by wrapping it in this. Whenever you're designing a form, one thing not to be overlooked is repeatability. In this case, we have to cast four of these parts. So whatever form we design, we should design it so that we don't have to build it four times. You may have to replace the duct tape, but hopefully we don't even have to replace that. And now this piece of PVC is firm, but soft and squishy in a way, and so it will give. It's also slightly oversized when held in comparison to a fitting. Next, we have to attach the hole to the bowl. And this can be done by just cutting a piece of plywood that fits inside the pipe and then using hot glue to stick it there. Just pay attention that the hotter you get the bowl and the hotter the plywood, the better the whole thing will stick. Okay, listen up. The next two steps are super important. Wax and mold release. Someday I would like to share with you my own personal recipe for mold maker's wax. But for today, we're just going to coil little snakes of modeling clay and stuff them in there and do some finger work so that we get a watertight seal. And finally, some vegetable shortening. Best mold release ever. Coat the whole thing. Get every surface that you don't want the concrete to stick to. It's sort of hard to see in there, but now there is no friction on the clay at all. So you can really smooth it perfectly. And you can get it just as neat as you please. Now it's time to measure out some concrete. One 80 pound bag will be plenty to make four of these parts. In my case, I'm using an old plastic paint bucket that's been cut down to five inches. Using one of these, I have to fill it up one and a half times with dry concrete. Whenever you're mixing concrete, it is not unusual to feel an overwhelming compulsion to add water. Try to resist this urge. This is a pretty good mixture right here. Not porridge, slightly crumbly. Attach a wooden circle to your oscillating tool and you can use it to vibrate this stuff. Of course, this mix is somewhat dry for vibration, but it will work at the end when you're working the cream up onto the top of the concrete. If you're getting the feeling 
that this is just too dry. Don't worry, no it's not. Okay, the fun part, part removal. Patience is tough, I know. Trust me, I know. But you want to at least give it 24 hours. If you're squeamish, wait 48. It depends on the part thickness and the atmosphere. Yeah, whatever. Just at least wait 24 hours before you do this. And get a carpet, just like I have, a scrap piece of carpet. Still no reason to worry yet. I used since I used the vegetable shortening, it's starting to come here. One more time. No. There it is. Pretty cool process, isn't it? If I had added more liquid and vibrated the concrete more, this surface would be smoother, but it would also be more difficult to get it out of the form. Considering that this is for a sewer pipe and it's going to be underground and it's a thick stone wheel of a part that's going to have grass growing over top of it. Consider carefully just how much attention to detail you place. Videos like this one are sometimes shot out of their actual chronological order. I've now cast two parts like this in real life, and so this mold has been reused. There's no reason why you can't reuse these parts again and again. Just clean them off with some WD-40 once the bowl is spotless. Reattach this part and repeat the process. The modeling clay can certainly be reused, and even the hot glue, this can be reused by just heating it up with a heat gun. First, we dig. This is slightly deeper than I need it to be, because I want this to be flush with the top of the ground. But that gives me some room to work, and now I'm going to use this stick to find an average of what I think ground level is. Now that I've settled on just one pencil mark, and I'm double, triple, quadruple checking everything as I go, I need to determine if this is the top of the ground, where do I cut off my pipe so that this will fit and the top of this will be just about one quarter inch lower than the ground. I think I found my spot. If I cut it off right here, the top of this should be just under surface level. This is just a hacksaw blade with a handle, and if I ride it along this as I cut, it should be nice and square. The end cap fitting is going to be left without cement, and there is a reason for this, which I'll explain in a moment. But for now, take a look at the dirt. Not all dirt is the same. What I'm using here is a real fine clay, and I'm trying to pack it tightly in place, which gives me a good bed for the bowl to rest. It will support it well and hopefully be somewhat water resistant. I'm even ramping it up on the sides of the bowl. Then I cover the whole thing with a nice, rich topsoil for the sake of the grass. To finish this off, some silicone caulking, a drinking straw, and a shopping bag. We pull this apart. Now we'll tuck it in and make a sort of gasket. 
and this will serve a few functions one of which is to help keep our pipe centered on this piece of concrete stop at the straw come back in this direction the other function is to act as a backer so that we don't lose too much caulking down there the bag is just underneath the top of the fitting dish soap and water spray your hands really well The silicone will not stick to soapy wet fingers. Feel free to spray directly on the silicone. You can't hurt it. In fact, we don't want it to bond too well to the PVC because the PVC should separate if there's too much pressure coming from the pump. It's a warning system. And the straw can be pushed down and that little hole in the caulking should let out any trapped rainwater. This video was supposed to be a somewhat interesting introduction into basic mold making, but I have to admit that I'm only cautiously optimistic about how these will perform over time. What I'm saying is that the bowl might be ejected from the ground. If it starts to come up out of the surface, I may have to redesign this. Maybe into some square toroid shape, like a stone wheel, more cylindrical, or maybe even something trapezoidal, like a, so that it would have a keystone shape and be wider at the bottom. We'll see. I would suggest that you keep in touch by reading comments and reading the description. If these start to pop up, I will let somebody know. That said, they have not popped up yet, so there is something that I've been dying to do.